Welcome back to my channel. Last year, about the same time, I attempted to do some uh, basketball photography. And I had absolutely no clue <laughs> what I was doing. And I wound up with a lot of images that just weren't sharp. They were way too high with noise. And part of that was the fact that I was using the wrong lens and I didn't have a fast enough lens. <clears throat> so this Saturday, our school played their arch rival, their nemesis, um, in, and we won all three games, by the way, junior varsity girls and varsity boys. Um, but I decided that I would, since I had to be there to watch the game and be sort of an administrator on duty, that kind of thing with all the rest of the administrators, um, I decided I would take some pictures and I would try again. So I took the trusty RF 28 to 70 F2. Now, this is a great lens for any action that's happening on the half of the court nearest you, but it's not so great to try to get to the other end of the basketball court. Um, although I did take a few shots that way and, and they turned out halfway decent. So what I wanted to do today was kind of walk you through my editing process and how I go about culling out pictures and what I do to edit them. So before we do that, let me just start by saying that um, my settings for this photo shoot, um, I was shooting at F2, wide open. Uh, I had it in manual mode. I had the shutter speed set at 1 1250th of a second. So F2, 1250th of a second. And I let my ISO on auto uh, so that it would just kind of bounce around. And I also set the camera to save in a high quality JPEG rather than RAW. Um, now, I could have saved it in RAW because I only took a couple hundred pictures, which is not a lot of pictures for sports photography. But you know, most people who talk about sports photography on the YouTube channels that I've followed, uh, talk about saving everything in JPEG because it's a much smaller file size. It's much e easier to edit, uh, to get them loaded into your program, that kind of stuff. And I found that to be true. So I saved them in a high quality JPEG. Now, the one thing that I was concerned about was that last year in the, can in the lens that I was using, I was still using the EOS R, but I, I, I was either using my 24 to 105 or my 24 to 240, I don't remember, one of those two lenses, <clears throat> but they're not incredibly fast. So, you know, the, the fastest aperture that you can get on those lenses is like, I don't know, 4.5 or something, which means that the ISO is just gonna bump out through the roof. And I had a lot of noise. So in this particular photo shoot, as I go through some of the pictures, you'll see some of the uh, metadata on the screen. I don't really talk about it. Um, but the, the highest ISO that I had was 3200 and the ESO or the ES, EOSR <laughs> will handle 3200 ISO with no noise whatsoever. And so I, I didn't have to worry about noise. Um, so I just want to take you through that for just a little bit and we'll, we'll talk on the other end of, of, uh, this editing profile, uh, sort of about what happened and what I may try to do next. Okay, so I shot all of these images, with the exception of this one, I shot all of the images in high quality JPEG. And I took this picture with this coffee filter here because this is the poor man's white balance. So the first thing that I did, I uh, came over here and I set the white balance. And you can see there's a subtle difference there. And so, then I selected all of my pictures and I did a sync and I did a sync just on the white balance so that I could sort of see all of the pictures a little better as I'm going through to cull them out. And so in order to cull, uh, I have, uh, I, I usually go through sort of uh, something I learned from Scott Kelby years ago, which is to take the full shoot, and then go through and get a list of picks and then to narrow that down to selects. And so 
I took some pictures of the JV game up front just to sort of get my uh, bearing straight. And I really like this picture, except that uh, it is this Austin East player in the background between these two students who are act, who is actually in focus. And so I'm not going to select that image. And we'll just kind of go through a few more. Um, this one was in focus, so I'm going to uh, select P here to select it and move on to the next image. Here you can't see him. There you can't see him. Um not really a great picture either, um, but I'm going to go ahead and select it for now, uh, just to just to see how I feel about it later on. Um, and so I was really working on focus here um, through the JV game. I didn't take a whole lot of pictures, but uh, I did take a few that sort of got me started, um, and uh, I. I'm just going to select a few and go through and then we'll look at those. So I also got the color guard um, and I, I like this picture because I like the, uh, the, the girl in front, but I like it better. I think um, with all of them, with the exception of these other people in the picture. So I'm not going to select that one, but I did get them lined up on the other edge of the floor. And I like this picture, not only because it's in focus, but because of the, reflection on the floor uh, and I am a big uh, a big fan of the color guard at the beginning of the game so <clears throat> I got a few pictures here of them and I'm just going to keep going through and selecting pictures um, to put in my um, my uh, pics folder um, things that I think are interesting I took pictures of the girls game before I got into the other game um, I can't see her face here, but we'll speed this along so that we can sort of see what's going on uh, after all of the picks are selected. All right, so I have gone from 209 pictures, uh, which I could have taken a lot more, I suppose, <clears throat> down to 66 pictures, and that's still way too many pictures, so we're going to have to do a little culling. But before I do that, I am going to do a quick sync edit now this is the very first picture it may be a little darker than some others but we're going to start here and so we're just going to bring down the highlights a little bit take some of that shine off the lights we're going to bring up the shadows just a tad and then i'm going to hit the shift key and double click on whites and double click on blacks uh, and I'm going to bring the whites back up just a little bit. Now, this is the one area that I will need to go through every single picture um, to set the whites and blacks the way I like them. But this is a good start. I'm going to bring the clarity up just a tad and the vibrance up just a tad and contrast up just a tad. I'm also going to come down here and give it just a little bit of a vignette. Minus 13 seems to work for me pretty good. Um, and then I'm going to look at the detail later on another picture where I've got a little closer uh, look. But I'm going to sync all of those settings across all pictures real quick. So we will select them all. We will sync. We'll just check everything. I haven't done a lot of this stuff yet, but it will sync everything, including that white balance setting back over it. Um, and so now I've got um, some wiggle room to come through and start editing pictures. Now, I don't necessarily, I'm going to bring up just a little bit here. I don't necessarily like this picture, so I'm not going to keep it. Um, but I am going to see what it would look like because it's a JPEG. If I were to bring this in just a tad and we bring him over to the third, what does it look like then? And actually, it doesn't look too bad. It looks a little better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the six to put a red flag around it and we'll go through a couple of more pictures here uh, again this one shows a little more action after the shot 
and you can see I've already set most of the most of the settings here so I'm just going to hit the white balance and the blacks and I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit where you can see it a little more clearly um, and I like this picture from the standpoint of the action of the athletes and the ball got captured in the air. I shot a lot of these pictures at 70 millimeter and it took out some of the, some of the shots that I wanted because I couldn't see the ball after it was gone from their hands. So there are a lot of shot at 28 millimeter. This one was shot at 28 to get all of the field in play. And you can also see, uh, as we're looking at the JV game here, look at the bleachers compared to the bleachers when the boys game gets started, uh, the varsity boys. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say I like that picture. And then uh, I did want to get one picture here of uh, just uh, this student sort of out here by himself. So this is setting the white balance and the... Uh, the blacks. I'm going to bring the white balance back down just a tad. I'm going to bring the exposure up um, so that we can see him a little better. And again, I'm going to do just a tad bit of cropping here to get more into, I like him in the center of that picture and maybe with the goal up there at the top. That looks much better. So I'm going to keep that. So I'm going to go through and I may wind up selecting all 66 pictures, I don't know, but I'm going to go through and see uh, what I have, and uh, we'll be back when I get done. All right, so I have set some pics. I may cull some more out, but I am down to about 45 images, which is much more doable. What I did find is that because I set the white balance on that coffee filter sort of over in the shadow, <clears throat> rather than out here in the light, my white balance is a little off. So I'm going back through each image and this is where I take a look and I think, okay, so what do I need to do with this image to make it a little better? And I think one of the things that I'm going to do with this one is crop it just a little bit because this, these people right here are just a little bit, um, I don't know why it cropped there, but, um, Oh, it's because I've already cropped it. Never mind. I am going to crop it just just a little more. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to raise it up. I'll lose a little bit of the... Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it the way it was. So let's go back here. I like it better with all of the... Um, more of the referee in the, in the shot. So... I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to reset the white balance just a little bit on some. So, you know, fortunately, Fulton was wearing white. So I can sort of grab a piece of white shirt, change the white balance just a little bit. Um, and then sort of look at how crooked is my image because I have a real habit of um, holding the camera a little bit sideways. And this little area down here with the lights, I'm going to bring the highlights down just a little more so I don't blow that out quite so much. <clears throat> and it's just a matter of going through and sort of touching up, getting back into, um, you know, where we want these images to be. Uh, and I like this image because of the reflection again uh, on the floor. It's always nice. Um, so I'm going to go through and re-edit these pictures, do a little cropping, do a little straightening, and then we will come back to, uh, to uh, exporting the images here in just a moment. All right, I've been through all of the images. I've straightened them. I've done a little cropping. I've reset some white balance here and there. I've added a little exposure a couple of times. Uh, just sort of fine tuning. I'm pretty happy with the images I have left there. I have 45 here that I'm going to export. And so what I'm doing these days is I will export all 45 of these at full res and upload them to my Flickr account. And then I will also um, put a few, I will export a handful to use in this video and then sort of at the end when the music plays. And then I will also do a few uh, that are exported at, um, I think it's 1,200 megapixels on the long side that goes into my 
website gallery. Uh, and so uh, once I have them all exported, we will be done. And this whole process took about 30 minutes for this shoot. I, I think it really helped that it was in uh, JPEG and not RAW. So a few things I learned, first of all, is that when I was first starting to take pictures with the Junior Varsity, I was trying to hold my camera up and follow with the live view. I can't follow fast enough. The, the, the game moves too fast for that. So I wound up having to put the camera up to my eye in order to really see where the action was going, be able to turn a lot quicker that way. Um, I'm not you know, sort of arching my arms around, but I'm actually pivoting here, which makes the movement a lot faster. So I was able to keep up with things a lot better. I was focusing with um, a center point with nine points around it um, so that I could sort of get a little broader field of view. And where last year I was trying to focus on the face, which was nearly impossible, this year I was focusing on the jersey, a much bigger target to hit. And at that, that distance away at F2, it really doesn't matter that much as long as I was hitting the target. Um, the other thing that I learned was that if I'm really going to capture basketball photography, I have to have the camera up all the time. I can't sit there and wait until I think something is going to happen because by the time I get the camera up to my eye, it's already happened and gone. And, um, you know, that happened in uh, actually with a basket made by our opposing team, Austin East, when they did a fast break and came down and the player just, I mean, did a hard dunk on the basket and the place, the Austin East fans just erupted. I missed that shot because I wasn't really taking shots of the opposing team making baskets. And I really need to think about doing that a little differently. But when I go back to, uh, we're, we have another game against this same team um, in January, I think. And so I will go back again with the 28 to 70, but I will also take a longer lens just to see what happens with it. Um, but I came away with a number of images that I was very pleased with. We did, we were able to stop the action and get pictures in focus. Um, and that was really my number one goal, whether any of the pictures were worth looking at or not was irrelevant to me at the time. I was just trying to stop the action and get it in focus. And I was able to do that. And I got a few shots that I felt were, were pretty good. And I got a lot of shots that were sort of mediocre. They're all mixed in with the, with the shots that I posted. So if you've watched to this far in the video, you'll know that I'm going to post a few pictures here at the end. There will be a link in the description that will take you uh, to, if you haven't already wound up on my blog, it will take you to my blog that has more pictures in the photo gallery than are what is in the um, video and then it will also offer you a link both here in in YouTube and on that blog post to all of the pictures about 45 of them on my Flickr account if you're new to the channel I hope that you will uh, click the subscribe button and maybe even the little notification button and then I would really appreciate you appreciate you leaving a comment in in the comment section here on the video to tell me about your experience photographing sports if you've done that. What camera lens are you using? What aperture are you using? What kind of settings are you using? Um, and maybe even a link to some of your stuff so that I can go look at it. I would really appreciate that. We'll see you next time.